Well, I, I gotta do this. Relax. Because they asked 8,000 questions. What's up, y'all? Okay, I do my intro. Hey, guys. So, I'm so <laughs> glad that you're here today. And we're gonna have so much fun. I have my mom roll my eyes. <laughs> See the roll of eyes? So, we're gonna try to get through this without arguing. So, hope you enjoyed. Anyway, here we go. Thanks for all your questions that you've already submitted. Hopefully, we can get through all of them. But if not, maybe we'll do part two. Maybe. We'll see how part one goes. Do you actually watch my videos? <laughs> What's up, y'all? I hope you can hear me okay because one, I lost my tripod. I think I sent it back home um, too soon, but so I don't have my tripod. I'm sitting this, sitting the camera on this like basket to kind of elevate it. Um, sit two, yes, as she said, I'm with my mom, Rosa. Da -da -da. Mom's here. So I asked you guys um, a couple days ago on Instagram to ask us some questions because we were going to do a. Q and A. You guys asked a ton of questions. Like I was scrolling through the questions for at least a minute on like a good long scroll. So I'm just gonna. I took some screenshots and I'm gonna just ask questions. Okay. Okay. First question was is for my mom. Who was the most unbehaved child? You. <laughs> well, they. Well, it was a tie between her and Seth, but they really weren't bad children. They were just challenging. So they never did anything really bad. They just, she threw a couple temper tantrums um, when she was little. Um, and so those were a little hard to manage, uh, to manage, but other than that, they were all really good. You guys notice how she said that her and Seth, because Stefan's the golden child. <laughs> he doesn't do anything wrong. Is you guys' relationship close? Is that for me or you? For, we'll both comment. I think it is now more than when I was like growing up. Um, she was always like super strict. I was a parent. She was super strict. And so, I mean, and, and she thinks that me and my dad are alike, but the older I get, the more I realize that how much we are alike. And so, which makes me realize why when I was growing up, we butted heads so much. Cause like, it used to be bad where I would be like, we'd have like maybe three or four, a span of three or four days of like really good days. And I'd think like, oh, something's about to happen or we're gonna have to get an argument. And then that day would come. And then it's just like a cycle until I turned 18. See, cause she, cool. want, she wanted that. But as a parent, I think we're close. I think as a parent and growing up, I never really strive to be my children's friends. I really wanted to be parent and to raise them. And I think now as we've gotten older and she's now an adult, I'm less of a parent and trying to just transition into a different kind of role, which I don't really know what that role is right now, but just to kind of be not really her friend, but her mom friend, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, like in the sense where I wouldn't go ask like my friends certain questions that I would ask you because you're my mom and you would know something like this, like better than what my friends would. Um, but I still would ask you friends questions that I would still ask my friends. Right. And there are some things that I don't think I want you to ask me that you would ask your friends because I think that's just cool that you have. I don't need to know everything. And so I just think it's cool when you have your friends and you think you can tell your friends stuff that your mama doesn't know, or you think it's gonna embarrass your mom or whatever, even though there's nothing that you could say. As every parent says, there's nothing you could do that I haven't already done. So I just think it's cool to have those separate relationships. Don't ask that. Everyone wants to know what, how old you were when you had me. 29. Oh, that's 28. 29. So you got pregnant with me at 28. Yes. Though. Yes. yes, yes. Oh, also everyone wants to know what are your beauty secrets? Like what is your skincare routine? You don't have to like go through the whole thing, but like what what um, companies slash products do you use? And how do you use I use a combination of biologic. If you guys want, <laughs> if you guys follow me on Instagram. You need a translator gets... for my country <laughs> pronunciation of that. I don't know how to pronounce it either. But if you follow me on Instagram, um, I talk about this company, Biologique Restaurer. She put me onto them actually. Um, and so we use the same products in that sense. But And they give the best facials 
than I've ever had. So if you're in Charlotte um, and you want a facial, if you want a splurge, on the facial it will be a little bit of a splurge. Yes. But um, Tosca European Spa, or Tosca Tosca, um, it's in Charlotte, so. Okay. So I use that and then I just started using Sisley. I uh, love their products. Again, these are products that are a little bit more pricey, but the amount of product that you get lasts a very long time, so you're not having to replenish it very often. And I'm not one for having to do a lot to my face. So with these products, it's just simply wash, tone, and then at my age, I gotta have some vitamin C in there, and then a good moisturizer, and that's and some sunscreen. Uh, but I like to do the um, moisturizer with that as a sunscreen in it because too many things and I just get overwhelmed. So um, that's what I do. And then like exercise? I try to exercise at least three days a week. Um, but then there are times where I take off three months and then I try to get into it. But I think, get back into it, but I think being an athlete all of my life, my body is just used to being in a certain kind of shape and so it's easy to bounce back uh, as I'm getting older again. Um, it's a little bit more challenging but um, it's still not that difficult. My body kind of craves working out when I do but um, that's it. What's Mrs. Curry's best advice to a new mom? This woman, I am Denise Baez. She's four months in. Hi Denise. You know what, that is an excellent question because... I feel like it's so different. It's, it is yeah. so different to each person. I would say there was one thing that I didn't listen to that now I wish I would have. And that is sleep when your baby sleeps. Because as a woman, we get our baby down and then we're like, okay, now what else do we need to do that we didn't get done? There's gonna, as long as you're having children and you're a parent, there are gonna be things that you don't get done. So sleep when they sleep because you need that. You need it. You just need it um, so that you don't wear yourself out completely. You're worn out anyway, just so you don't wear yourself out completely. And even if you're not a sleeper, just sit and do something mindless or just watch a movie, but just don't get up and do cleaning or anything else. Just relax. Oh, by the way, this is Lacey Boose, aka Lay. Um, this is my mom and dad's first grand, grand dog. dog. Um, that she now lives with them, so she wanted to come say hi. Who wants to know who does? This is I'm just gonna answer this because I get this question all the time. Who does your lashes? We both got our lashes done by the same girl. But if you're in Charlotte, I have in the past. This is only the second time ever I've gotten lashes. Um, and in the last time I got them was probably three years ago. And I use Lash Me Now here in Charlotte. So if you're in this area or in Charlotte, um, mm -hmm. Tiffany is excellent. So I recommend, I highly recommend her. I'll put everything that, um, products, all products that we're mentioning, I'll put it in the description box just in case you guys ask. So her skincare stuff. Now in Charlotte, Lash Me Now and Tiffany. And then when you're here in the Bay, um, who does mine all the time and her Instagram is I am Tara B so I'll put that it's in the description box here too what is your mom's favorite part about having a daughter I'm also gonna like add what is my favorite part about being the only girl because I got this is, this is a question too so we'll just tag team it um, my favorite part about being the only girl and also the youngest is that I got like I got to see what it's like to be um, have siblings and to be an only child because my brothers are obsessed with three years older than me, two and a half, um, right? Oh, so that's four years old. No, yes. I'm 24, so that's 28. Nine. 28. 29. 28. He's gonna be 29. No, because seven's gonna be 31. They're not that close. They're two years apart. I do know my children. So. Hey Siri. Seth was born how, in 90. How old is you Seth were born Curry? in 94. According to my sources, Seth Curry is 28 years old. But he'll be 29. I, I said it. I said that. No, I said he's 28 this years old. This is like, what no. it's like having a daughter. Anyways. I, anyway, at the end of the day, <laughs> I was at, like I was in the house by myself for long enough 
four years. For four years. So I was like an only child for four years. And so I, got, I, I like that I got to see both sides. I don't really prefer one over the other. Um, from what I can remember, it's been so long since. I've been, it's been so long since I've been in this house, like in general, six, seven, seven years. But anyways, so, um, and then also like, mom and I used to go on tons of road trips together, um, especially if we were going to like travel to see the brother, my brothers play, or just in general, like we would just go on lots of trips. So that was, that's really fun, like something that um, if I have a daughter, daughter one day, I'll definitely do, um, because it just like creates a lot of memories. And I actually kind of crave them a lot, like for the past three months, for four, three, four months, I've been like, let's go on a trip, let's go somewhere. Um, Cause it's just nice to like, you know, have that one on one time, um, especially with your mom. Oh, that's kind of poopy. I like doing this. Cause, you... Cause I'm honest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I made a tissue. Okay, we're not gonna okay. cry. It's actually wonderful. But I have to then say back, I didn't really think I wanted a girl when I was pregnant with her because I'd had the two boys. So it was like, mm, I don't know what to do with her because I'm a tomboy and what if she likes pink and likes to dance and do all the really girly stuff. I didn't, didn't feel as confident with it. But then once I had her, it was like such a balance between all the testosterone that was in the house already. And she, she actually was a nurturer to her brothers and her dad more so than I actually was. Um, and more in tune with them as far as kind of wanting to make sure they were okay, how they were feeling and things like that. So she bought a, a nice balance to our family. And I do agree, like I always say when she graduated, I'm gonna miss my travel buddy because we, we did travel together. And she's not very high maintenance. Like we get in a car and we don't have to talk a lot. We just ride. Um, we like the same thing. So it's not like we're always competing on what to do. Um, we can just, do nothing or we can we like pretty much we like to go into plays um, we like concerts so um, it really helps that every once in a while um, <laughs> a fresco too <laughs> um, but it helps to just have her like the female perspective of just um, I guess that's the kind of the friendship kind of thing. But when she was younger too, we would I would do a lot of like one-on-one -on -one devotion things with her that were just yeah. about being a girl and growing into a woman. Styrofoam versus fine china. <laughs> what did you decide? It was plain china. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, and that devotion, I actually do want her to put this on. Um, what do you call it? Listed. When you list like the products, description and box. Like, yeah, where I'm put, yeah, where you I'll put, put this it. in the description box. Yeah, but it's it was a cool devotion that I did with her when she was like 12, and it really like took took her through like all the points of becoming a woman and a teenager, and it was just awesome to have that one on one to hear her thoughts, to share my perspective on things, and then to watch now that she's adult and how when she went through those phases. Of, just how that's influencing her decision making and being a wife now and then preparing her own home. So those are cool things to do. Someone wanted to know dating wise. So how old was I when I, these are like four or five questions put into like one question. How old was I when I was allowed to start dating? What did you think of my first boyfriend? And what did you think through my dating process leading up to being married? Like what were your thoughts? And how did you how did you contribute? Well, I'm gonna say that she wasn't supposed to date until she was 16. So I'm gonna ask her who was her first boyfriend? <laughs> My first real, real boyfriend? Yeah. Dre. Dre. I thought Dre was I was 17 by the way. With Dre. Yes. I thought Dre was a good first boyfriend for her. He was quiet. He but he was fun, like he had a fun side. Um, he adored her, which was great. And so, and he, his parents were fun and, and nice. So I think it was a good first boyfriend experience um, for her. And I think as she's progressed now into being married, I think she has had the opportunity to experience the 
I would say, not the gamut, because I don't want that to sound like she's dated a lot of guys, but I think on the spectrum of personality-wise and then how they've treated her, um, she's had the gamut of it. So I think she's been able to really kind of navigate through each one of those relationships from a really, really bad one to a the next one kind of being like the total opposite of the really, really bad one, but still just not the person, to finding Damien now who is like, that's her godsend. That's the guy that I was praying for when she was a baby to for God to bring to her. So it's been nice and I've actually been really proud of her, of just how she's, as I said, navigated through all these, these relationships, through these relationships and those relationships and to get her to where she is now because I think where she is now she appreciates what they have together. She appreciates what Damien brings and she's confident in what she can add to Damien as well. Yeah. Eventually I feel like I have a lot to offer as far as because I have gone I haven't gone through like multiples but I've gone through enough in each relationship to that's gotten me to the point where I'm at. Um, and like a lot of people ask me like, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you find like the right person? Like, what do you look for? And for me, like it didn't happen easily, but when it like the right one was here, it was like more clear for me because of all the other things that I've been through. Um, and in each relationship, I think I had a total of four boyfriends, including Damien, four boyfriends. Um, and they all brought something totally different to the relationship that I learned from, which is, which is what's really important. I know my mom always, um, t told my brothers and I like don't date to date like date to marry and that's something that like when you're when you have that at that like mindset going into relationships I mean at 17 I did have boyfriends like boyfriends I didn't really date them but like at school or whatever um, so I didn't like go into those relationships thinking like I don't, I'm dating to marry, but when you go into relationships dating to marry, you pay attention to things more um, that you should think about for future wise. And then you're able to like, I, I, for me, I was able to see like, this is, he's not the one for me. I think more so of what I was getting to was we don't date to be just dating. Like people are valuable within themselves so when i think about dating old school and i see you know especially being in the athletic world and people just go through people like they're like disposable days and so i don't like that and so i'd always try to raise my children to understand just don't go from one person to one person just because okay well i'm you look good right now and you fit what i need right now and then okay i'm done with you next 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 more so instead of dating today, I try to emphasize that we, and this is gonna sound kind of animalistic or primitive, but we mate. So be friends. I kept trying to encourage my children to have, just be friends, be friends in groups. So you can get to know people and you don't waste their time. They don't waste your time. Because when you date somebody, you're responsible for them. You will leave a lasting imprint on them. And you always want to leave a positive one, period, with anybody. And so, Sadell so always used to try and encourage her. She's my social butterfly in the family. Stefan's really social, Seth's not as social, but she's our social butterfly. She always has been since she was little. So I always would try to encourage her to have some time for herself which was the hardest thing for me to get her to not to, to take time, even between the relationships that she did have, to just be with herself. Yeah, but it's not because like I was just like fast. I'm like, oh, you like me? Okay, let's go. Because I I'm, I like I care about people, and and I if I if I like you, I'm and, and if you're a girl, boy, whatever. Like if I like you, I'm gonna invest time into you yeah. because I'm I really care about you. Um, and so like. I would meet somebody and we would vibe and it just happened quicker. And she's more now than now that she's older, this is one aspect of her that we are alike, is that when we're in, we're in. Like there's no 50% in, we gotta go all the way and then, but when we're out, we're out. So that whole process of that, I now understand a little bit more of, of her also being a social butterfly 
for, and also with the relationships is that we're, we're cool. I like hanging out with you and let's see where this goes. Yeah. I, I think I'm gonna do, I got to still pray on it a little bit because I do think I have a lot to like offer girls or women who are kind of in that like, I should be married but I'm not or how do I get to that point? And I know that I'm young um, and like there are maybe people, women who are in their 40s and they're still trying to find the right one. Um, so just from my experiences, I feel like I can tell a lot. I just have to figure out the right way to talk about it without, um, with being able to give a lot of information, but not over expose all these guys, um, but also being sensitive to my relationship with Damien as well. And I think a lot of those relationships reflected where you were yourself, that you, you actually engaged in those specific relationships because of where you were. So I think that's another perspective of it is the transition that you went through as a person and what what phase you were in or transition you were in, you attracted that type of person. Like you, yeah. you sought that kind of person because they were feeding that part of you. So that's a different perspective that you can kind of approach it. No, for sure. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. I dated who I dated for a reason that like, got me here. Um, so yeah, maybe look out for that video coming up soon. Um, a lot of questions were talking about how, um, asking about mom and I both playing volleyball in college. And so, um, well, volleyball in general. Um, so we were wondering, is there any pressure from my parents to play basketball and or volleyball um, and why I chose to play basketball? I don't think that pressured me. Well, I'll, I'll admit, I put a little pressure on you when middle school going into your freshman year in high school from the standpoint of making a choice. Cause I know some of you guys went through this or if you're a younger girl and you're listening and now in the world of sports now, they make it really hard for you to play more than one sport. And so, especially if you're doing club or travel, cheerlead, anything, then you they make you pretty much choose that sport. And so she was at that point as a freshman to decide she was a three sporter. She did softball, she did volleyball, and she did basketball. And volleyball, they went all the way to the state finals. The basketball team had already started and she was gonna have to go the next day to basketball. And she was like, I don't wanna do this. And it almost broke my heart. I was just like, no, you've got to play basketball. And my husband was the opposite. He was like, what's the problem? And I was like, Dale, don't you want her to play basketball? And he was like, mm up to her. Now I was excited because she then chose the sport that I loved, but I actually wanted basketball or thought she would do basketball over volleyball. So it was funny though because the day that I chose this is, I, this, is what someone, this is what someone told me. I don't know if it's 100% true, but everyone was like, that's so true, that's, that's what happened. But the day that I chose volleyball, because I was playing basketball, um, but I was going to basketball practice and then club volleyball at the same time. And the day that I decided to pick volleyball and quit basketball, we had a basketball game like the next day or two days later, and someone told me that Virginia Tech scouts came to watch the basketball game, came to watch me at that basketball game that I was no longer at. Because like the whole idea was that, oh, we missed out on, um, I don't know who's coach there at the time either, but so we missed out on Seth, we missed out on Seth, and they had like, Seth was a star at Davidson, Seth was a star at Duke, and so they were like, we're not gonna miss out on the last curry that's playing <laughs> basketball, and then I quit, and then they go to watch me, and I was like, dang it, did I make the wrong decision? Um, but from like the moment I picked volleyball, I was like committed like 100%. Um, I also picked it because I don't like to run and the fact that I have to go to practice every day, basketball practice, basketball practice every day and run suicides, absolutely not. And a little secret about her is she does not like to sweat. So she probably can count on her hand, one hand, how many times she actually broke a sweat all the way through high school and she would let you know that when she did i'm sweating so but then i went to college <laughs> and it was like a huge reality check like you thought you're gonna get away with this but no we're running 300s every practice you're gonna fight i mean you're gonna fight you're gonna sweat like you're it's not gonna be easier than basketball so um i don't know i i love volleyball like i still wish that i could continue playing um but i 
love my decision and I'm happy with my decision. Um, I could have used it last weekend though. Yeah, my basketball. I could use I it. am the champion. Okay. We're gonna answer one more question because <laughs> we gotta go. We're asking too about my like obviously my overarching thing is mental health. So a lot of people are asking about how you help with help with me with my mental health, which you weren't really around when it was, I mean you were around obviously, but I wasn't like living at home and all that happened. So like, what, how do you do, how do you help, how do you help Sadelle with her mental health then now? You know what, I don't, I don't know if I actually help other than I've learned to just withdraw from conversation or topics when I know she's showing that she's frustrated or anxious. I now have learned to identify situations that make you anxious. Like what? You don't like crowds. And so I never understand that because I don't mind crowds. So I'm like, come on, so come on, let's do it. And she's like, ma, I don't, and I'm like, but that's new, it's new too. Like mm -hmm. I used to really, a lot of these behaviors that I've been like dealing with have happened in the last five, five years or so. Um, I don't really remember us being a lot of crowds before now. It's, life's gotten kind of crazy in the past five years. Life sped up a lot. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, it was more controlled when you were in high school and middle school and then now things are just being, she doesn't like, spontaneity from the standpoint of okay let's go right now and let's do this she'll she'll accommodate you but she doesn't prefer it and so I'm learning I'm just trying to pay attention now to more of what they would consider trigger points or things like that um, because I don't really really understand it like I'm a little Me old <laughs> school and I'm like what the hell's wrong with you <laughs> You're just being a B or whatever, or sensitive. you're being sensitive <laughs> and get over yourself and you're spoiled and rotten because we, you know, we tease her about being spoiled and being she was here by herself with us for four years and she says that she did get all the attention but then getting all the attention was too much attention because all the eyes were on her and, um, and so, um, so yeah, I don't really understand it. I'm trying to listen more now talk less um, and really just to say, okay, sorry. Um, and that's it. I, don't, I guess the more you learn about it, the more that yeah. we can learn about it as well. Yeah, like I honestly am as lost as everybody else is as it, when it comes to this. Um, I'm learning daily like what I like when I'm feeling super anxious or I'm having like one of those days where everything is just like too much. Um, and I feel like I'm the kind of person that if I'm feeling anxious, I don't, like what you do is good. Like I don't like to be asked a ton of questions or like bothered because I'm already in my head. And so like, it's just like an extra sense, an extra like, I don't know, when people are like really on me, like what's wrong with you, what are you doing, like da da da, that's just like doing too much because I want to answer you, but I don't know how to answer you. So I'm more, I so, I more so retreat when I'm feeling anxious and so, I guess what she, that's what she does, but she's not really around. Like I, I live on the East Coast, or on the West Coast. She lives over here in the, in the East Coast, and so a lot of the time I'm by myself in the house when I'm going through like these hard days. Um, so there really isn't like a lot of learning opportunities. Well, I mean, I know like even if I come out there and I'm like I'm the cleaner and and I'll say, okay, well we got to do this, and she's like, no. You kind of have to. And I trial think, and error. And I think too, just, I mean, also learning how to slow down too, because life is just pulling us so fast. And you're right, being able to just say, I need to just slow down. Now, one thing that I'm, I, I'm trying to navigate through is when she is, when you are anxious, 
and then the mom and, da, and I'm like, okay, that's when again the old school comes out because my mom's downstairs right now. <laughs> that's something you didn't do with her. But anyway, so yeah, we gotta go. It's 4.20, yeah. you have an hour that's to get ready. Minutes. Okay, well, thank you guys for watching. I know I, there's you. literally hundreds of questions maybe got through like 10 of them. If she will pay me, I will come back anytime y'all like to have me. So if y'all hit, <laughs> hit the thumbs up button, <laughs> that'll give me the money <laughs> to pay her to come back. But thanks for coming. You're welcome. Say bye, Lacey Boos. Say bye-bye. Say bye, Lacey Boos. Say bye. Say bye, Lacey Boos. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Also, shout out to all the new followers. There's been so many. I was telling my mom the other day how I'm like really proud of my channel, even though like it could be a little spotty sometimes. Like I upload when I can, and the fact that I've gotten you guys have been following and subscribing and like means the world to me, um, and makes me want to keep creating content as well because this is the first thing that I started on my own. Like my Instagram came from like my family, and like I've built off of that, of sure, of course. But I started this from nothing, literally zero in the past year almost a year and a half and I'm already at we're already at 20,000 subscribers wow. something like that thanks um, for supporting my sugar bear okay and we'll <laughs> see you I'll see you guys in the next upload so bye bye, bye.